Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of tech news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. And today, I'm going to have my dad use a Chromebook for the first time. The Locker Gnome Daily Report is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the powerfully simple way to meet online from anywhere. With GoToMeeting, you can share your screen and collaborate on files and programs with your team, all while seeing each other in HD video. Easily launch or join a meeting using your computer, phone, or tablet, even present from your iPad. Use GoToMeeting to meet with my vlogger fair team without having to leave this room. Oh yeah, if you want to try GoToMeeting, head over to GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PERILLO. Plus, one of you will receive this iPad and the opportunity to have a 30-minute GoToMeeting with me that will also be shared in this YouTube channel after, of course, we have that meeting. All you have to do to enter is tell me what you would like to talk about in our GoToMeeting, propose your idea on Twitter using the hashtag PERILLOIPAD and the hashtag GoToMeeting to qualify. One of you is going to get this one. What do you think? I imagine many of you like a good giveaway. This isn't quite a giveaway, but it's one hell of a deal on deals.lockernome.com. You can take flight with the micro drone for $49. That's half off this remote control drone. Diana, can we get a drone? Sure. Woohoo! She doesn't know I'm going to use it to spy on her. YouTube set to launch a music streaming service to take on Spotify. Wow. This is like better than MTV ever was when I was a kid. Most people use YouTube to listen to music anyway. Might as well make it official and easier. So if you're a Spotify fan, would you switch to using YouTube for music if you haven't been doing that already? Valve Ready's prototype Steambox video game console. I got a question. Who out there is going to get one or plans on getting one? I mean, it's going to be the future of video games, at least according to some. But... Unless, of course, you're Microsoft's head of Xbox who doesn't see Valve as a competitor and is happy with curated apps. Famous last words. Benjamin Apelix asked us on LockerGnome.com, will next generation devices make mine obsolete? My answer to that question, no. Unless, of course, that next generation device has something your current generation device doesn't have that you wanted or needed. If your current gen device is serving your needs, then it's not obsolete. Did it stop working when a new device came out? I'm guessing no, in which case it's not obsolete. You don't have to have the latest and greatest to have a good piece of hardware. Unless, of course, your name happens to be my dad, in which case I'm going to tell you, upgrade that damn PC. Smartphone upgrade. When is the time right? Asks Benjamin May on LockerGnome.com. The best time to upgrade is when your current phone is no longer doing what you want it to do. Now, me, I'm a fan of having a really good camera in my pocket. And so I've been using the smartphone over the past few years as my primary still photo camera. Now, my primary video camera, the one I use for the Perillo vlogs, is actually a dedicated point and shoot. And where the hell is that? It's around here somewhere. And let me tell you, the thing is beat up because I carry that everywhere and it's definitely not pocketable. The time to upgrade is simply when you're ready for something new or when that old thing just isn't cutting it. And despite many smartphone enthusiasts getting upset at what I'm about to say, I'm going to say it anyway. I don't think you have to upgrade your smartphone, but maybe once every two or three years. Otherwise, that could turn into a pretty expensive passion. Our question of the day is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. If you want to save money on your next purchase, all you need to do is email me, chris at perillo.com. I will send you my latest list of GoDaddy coupons. And the question is, how will my dad get along with a Google Chromebook for the first time? Are you ready? I'm ready. There you go. Chromebook, huh? I'm used to putting Chrome on my motorcycle, but I don't know about this thing. We'll see. We're out here, Dad. To do a, I can. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was uh, trying to see it, and I wear bifocals, so I got to get my head up sometimes where I can see. So let me hold this up where maybe you can see this too. I'm not a real. I don't normally use a pad. I usually use a mouse. So I know there's a way to use these things. Oh, okay. Whoops, this is someone's mail. Yeah, it was a, mine. It was a, G, a Gmail. And, oh, and there's Google that I'm used to seeing. But wait, why do, why do you have Google and Google Chrome? Are they two different things? So there's this Google search. And then there's this one, Google Chrome. 
So now both of those are open. Oh, they must be the same thing. And that's just some kind of a home button or something. Because when I select it, I don't get another Google page. So it's all the same page. The entire operating system is a browser. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all Google. So it's up there in Google Drive. And you use um, Google Docs. Uh, Google Sheet is the worksheet. Google Docs is the Word do uh, document deal. And the Google Sheets is the Excel lookalike. And Google Slides, I'm going to guess that's like PowerPoint. But I'm not real sure. And Google Hang. I'm not sure who we're going to hang. <laughs> Sometimes maybe I ought to hang people that throw these things in front of me. But it doesn't really make me feel dumb. I mean, I, I know everything, except I'm going to select this. It's a pound sign or a, what they call a hashtag, I think, in um, Twitter. But it's some kind of a program. So it's all things Google is what, this, what the MacBook Chrome is. But I'm wondering if there's like a store. Work. Oh, here's a search. So I could search for different apps. Like if I was looking for an app that I'm used to, I could do some kind of search, see if I could find an app that will work on the Chromebook that uh, would either be just like it or similar to the one I'm familiar with. But all the icons are pretty familiar. Um, it's kind of, I didn't realize the little play arrow was the YouTube uh, icon. And tweet deck that must be a different access to Twitter or Google's Google's equivalent to the search or to use Twitter. Whoops, I just went to it, and that's someone else's, so we won't open that. I don't know how anyway because I don't know the password. I know there's an easy way to work this mouse pad. See if it does. I know Judy uses all kinds of fingers on her MacBook, so I'm. Just Seeing if it does anything special. <laughs> and it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay, just one finger is all you need. And I, I, if, I'm sure there's a way to set settings on this. But I would try and figure out a touch. Instead of having to make it click, I would just do it like a tap deal. So if I just did that, it would do what I wanted to do other than. I, I don't see anything on this that's unfamiliar to me. I would say that's a good thing. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar with using the um, like Google Docs and um, and uh, the one for the um, Google Docs and Google Sheet. I'm not used to those. I would have to. Uh, I understand they're somewhat similar to ones I'm used to, which is Excel and Word. But what I don't like about them is that they're stored on a cloud. I don't care whose cloud it is. I'm just not, I just don't feel secure myself with the cloud yet. Well, I would think you could buy this a lot less expensive. But my question will be, if Google gets enough of these out of there, they're going to try and figure out a way to make money. I mean, they can't just give the software and the use of the software away for nothing continuously at some point my guess is that like the Google Docs and uh, the Google Sheets eventually they're gonna have to charge either uh, some type of a monthly fee or oh wait a minute I think someone's doing that right isn't that that three three six three sixty five or something they charge I think it's if I remember right ninety nine dollars a year to use that which is basically uh, a C drive a cloud drive so everything's not on the C drive of the computer, but it's in the cloud. And uh, that was Microsoft's way of maybe extending their revenues or trying to open some other doors. And I think Google may have to head that way too. Now, it's interesting that, you know, I always see that Google makes a lot of money, and I think they must really make their money on their searches now that I really think about it. and never thought about it until just now. But then whenever I do a Google search, I don't see any particular advertising 
So the only time you really run into the advertising, I think, is when you do a search, and then it'll give you some that are sites. My guess is the ones that are shaded, they pay for those positions. That's my guess. I don't know for sure. Like I say, I don't have a problem with this. I think it's... I, and then what the first thing I would do, let me see. Well, actually, it looks like an app. It looks like a... When I look at the site, it kind of looks like... A, a, the iPad uh, Air, I think they call it, the because it's skinny. It's it's pretty lightweight. It actually, you know, I had in my hands the other day. I had the Microsoft. Uh, I'm going to screw up the name probably. Surface Pro. It was a lot heavier than this. This is a lot. At least to me, this feels a lot lighter. I always like toys, but my problem is I'm getting so many that I don't. I don't particularly have a need for it, but now again, um, situations make you make decisions. So if something was to happen to my computer, and if if I was able to get myself over my hump with the cloud, um, it makes sense. I, the cloud is that cloud theory in itself makes a lot of sense to me because then you don't have to monkey around carrying flash drives or or um, a big heavy computer with a big memory or backing up or all that stuff gets eliminated if you use the cloud my problem with the cloud is if you'll notice just here the i'm getting a little off subject i think but just here the other day um uh, i'm trying to think evernote i think it was they had a problem with security and that people and i think that system's on a cloud if i know right i have it on my phone i haven't used it yet but i was thinking about starting to use it but now that they've had this problem now i'm saying do i really want to chance that and if I'm not involved in the cloud, I don't have to worry about that unless someone steals my computer. And then if I set it up so that when you open it, you have to put in a password, that password, that somewhat protects you. Thanks, Dad. You see that not everybody is ready for the cloud. I certainly am, and hopefully you are too. Thanks for liking and sharing this video with everybody you know, or at least one other person, because we're trying to grow this community bit by bit, and you can help with it. Because you're as much a part of the video that we do here as I am. Although, even though I am on the... We'll eat you later.